So hi, one of the Good Noise Podcasts. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with John from Memorist. How you doing guys? And we're gonna ask him some questions today about their new their upcoming EP Oni Kaijo. I'm gonna start, so congrats on that by the way. How do you feel about the response to the announcement so far? Um well as of as of right now, as of when we're recording this, we haven't actually announced it yet. Okay. So uh <laughs> it comes out it comes out uh well the announcement will launch at seven PM UK time. So what's that? Like like now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, like, no, I think 10 p.m. UK time is like 2 p.m. for you guys yeah. mm-hmm. tomorrow. Okay. Um, oh, Jesus. So, yeah, so, yeah tomorrow is, is when the announcement comes out. But I mean, the reception for the track so far has been mad. Okay, so, um, yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's been going well. Thank you. Hell yeah. I'm very happy to hear that. Uh, so, is there any meaning behind the EP name or cover art? Yeah. Um, oh, Christ, how long you got? Um, <laughs> so, uh, oh. I mean, I've always been a little bit obsessed with um, Japanese culture, Japanese mythology. Um, I can't speak Japanese. I can't read Japanese. I can't write kanji or nothing like that. But um, so uh, Oni is 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 kind of is ubiquitous. Like you know, uh, it's kind of known around the world. Oni is a Japanese demon, um, and uh, Kijo um, is a, a female demon. Um, mm. And in, in Japanese mythology, uh, essentially all. <laughs> I mean, Forgive me if this is uh, out of place, but essentially all women are um, uh, kind of demons disguised in in, in everyday form. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the meaning behind the EP uh, and a lot of the the kind of the context within the EP actually is is rooted in uh, a relationship that I kind of got out of towards the end of 2020, which is incredibly toxic. And and um, the the kind of dichotomy between the two people within that relationship, so myself and my ex partner, um, and myself being portrayed as the demon and her actually being realistically a a a demon disguised as anything but um in terms of the ep artwork i mean that's uh that that's less meaningful that was kind of a a a conversation with the guys of what color should we pick that looked cool i will go for purple no one's done purple yet um and um like the empiric the first video we put out was very kind of cably um had loads of cables in it and like ducting and that sort of stuff um and we were kind of going for this more like industrial electronic sound and and it just fitted like it just kind of kind of worked um and then we had a guy uh that i've known for years design us this new kind of emblem this new m um, that was really industrial and, and really kind of it stood out so we kind of slapped the two together and then yeah i showed the guys and they were like yeah that's cool i was like sound oh, that's that that's that done move on to the next thing mm-hmm. i love it uh so can you tell us a little bit about your writing process for the cp uh yeah so it's been um it well covid like everyone has had to do things remotely i'm sure you guys have had to do things remotely um we always did things kind of slightly remotely anyway um but most of the writing process really has, has been over like, like we're doing now like over zoom calls or over mm-hmm. facetime or you know, we, we'll we'll sit down like late at night. Um, so both myself and, and Chris, our guitar player, both got young, young children. Um, so we would put the kids to bed and we'd go to our studios and we would start writing. And um, that was how a lot of the songs started. You know, we'd, we'd kind of sit up late at night and we'd, we'd, we'd come up with whatever we could. And then it would get fed back to the rest of the guys and it would be between, you know, FaceTime and, and Dropbox and Google Drive um, and piecing things together. There was only one song on the whole EP that was actually kind of spawned in a practice room. Um, the rest of it was all, all done remotely. And actually I didn't, I didn't finish writing vocals for a lot of the EP until like April, oh, wow. <laughs> April 21. Wow. So, um, yeah, I, I, I kind of, um, yeah, I left it to the 11th hour a little bit. Um, <laughs> but it worked out all right. So it's good. Um, yeah, that, that was the writing process. Like basically as much as we possibly could from, a remote location all right that's insane all right uh so can you tell me where your headspace is at while you're creating the cp oh that's another good question you Thank have you guys done your you guys have done your research haven't you you've had a little look <laughs> always. You guys are, yeah, always um the last year for me personally has been incredibly difficult the last year for me has been really dark the last year for me has been um probably one that i didn't actually think i was going to survive um and this i mean music has always been a kind of cathartic process for me it's always been a process of dealing with emotional trauma or 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 stress or difficulty and this cp was no different um 
a lot of it I'd already written. I'd written a lot of it when I was in the aforementioned relationship. Um, and then a lot of it was written kind of afterwards. And, and it's it's been a process of dealing with things, I think, is, is probably the best way to put the best way to describe it. Um, I mean, if, if anyone listens to this who knows anything about our, our initial three singles, you know, we had Lost that was about the death of a very close friend, Love that was about the aforementioned toxic relationship, um, and Frustration, which was about, you know, uh, uh, experiencing infidelity in, in a partner. Um, and the EP is kind of an extension of that. Like, it, it, there's no differences here, really. It's, 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 it's another set of emotional experiences and memories that I have that I'm inviting people to share. Um, in terms of headspace, I mean, yeah, a, a very difficult time. Um, and the EP, writing the EP has actually helped me, helped me get from out the other side. So, yeah, it's been very therapeutic, I'd say. All right. That's good. Uh, so how do you recommend that your fans listen to the EP for the first time in the car with friends in the dark with headphones on? Is it a party EP, a workout EP? What do you think? Oh man, always in the dark with headphones. Always. Mm -hmm. Like any, I mean, it doesn't matter what you're listening to. You can listen to like a new 50 cent record, like listen to it in the dark with headphones on, man. Like <laughs> what are you doing? Like don't, don't listen to it in the car with your friends. <laughs> That's always in the dark with headphones. I agree. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like music is supposed to be, like there was a thing in the UK. I don't know if they got you guys had it in the US. It was called the Turn It Up movement, um, and it was uh, and, and it came alongside the deep listening movement. And it was literally like you should buy vinyl for a start. You should put yourself in a dark room on your own. You should deprive yourself of any other sensory experience apart from the music they're listening to, and you should turn it the fuck up. Mm -hmm. And that's how you should listen to music. And yeah, like. I mean, yeah, if you're driving somewhere, like, second, third, listen, like, put it on with your friends, fine, like, go to the gym, listen to a track, like, the Empirics already on workout playlist, like, that's fine, but yeah. you would listen to a body of work, like, from start to finish, put yourself in a dark room, put some headphones on, experience it, like, yeah, def definitely the dark room one. Right. That's a good question, I, I like that one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so this one should be super, super quick. Off the top of your head, I want you to describe this EP for new listeners in three words. Oh fuck! Um, <laughs> no pressure. Uh, when you say it's going to be super quick, I'm not. Gonna yeah, be super as fast quick. as you can. Um, uh, unanticipated. <laughs> Did you say unanticipated? Unanticipated. Okay. Unanticipated. That, okay. Yeah, like un unexpected, maybe rather than okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, That's better. unexpected. Yeah. Unexpected. Um, dark mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and emotive everything, oh. everything we do is relatively emotive so yeah unexpected dark and emotive perfect i like that mm -hmm. uh so in that same turn of thought but not as fast i promise is there a certain feeling or emotion you want your listeners to have while going through the ep no i mean it's there's it's five different songs and mm -hmm. each song has a different feeling um I mean, it opens and no one's heard the opening track yet. It's the last one that's going to come out and it's, it's angry. Like it's really angry and it's, it's really heavy. Um, and it goes through so many different feelings and emotions um, and ends on like just pure disdain. Like it, it, it's, there's a lot going on there. Like it's not, it's not necessarily one emotion. Um, and I'm sure like with, with everything we've done, people will attach their own feeling to it and that's kind of the point of this stuff is like i share my experiences and people interpret them in their own ways and you know that that means something for someone else different to what it might mean to me when i wrote it and that's that's why i meant music it's you know sharing fair enough all right perfect uh so while listening to the ep what band or artist influence pops out the most to you to me as an individual yep mm -hmm. oh <laughs> Um, I like wordplay. I, I don't really listen to much heavy music, to be fair. Um, I, I almost, almost exclusively listen to UK hip hop. Really? Um, yeah. So there's a UK hip hop artist called Jam Baxter. Um, and he's got an EP album. I think it's called Grotesque Features. Um, let me just quickly double check. I'm sure it's called Grotesque Features. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sorry. Oh, no, no problem. 
sorry, Obscure Liquors. That's what it's called, Obscure oh, Liquors. Oh, right. um, and and there's another album before that called Mansion Thirty Eight. Um, he's all about wordplay, and he uses. Um, he's incredibly, incredibly clever with the things he says. Um, lyrically and 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 kind of in terms of rhyme scheme and and rhythmically he was a massive influence for me um <laughs> and no one ever believes me when i say this but genuinely my biggest vocal influence is christina aguilera like really? i'm not even jo- i'm not even joking <laughs> like girls got pipes yeah yeah like, yeah you yeah, got a point yeah yeah you know what i mean um and i'm all about that like and even in like kind of the 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 kind of note choices and scales that i choose like it, it's it's very similar to the sorts of things that like a pop artist would do. So mm-hmm. yeah, um, that was probably an unexpected answer. Okay. Yeah, I never would have thought, but it makes sense. Since, since your main vocal influence is Christina Aguilera and you listen to almost ex- exclusively UK hip hop, how the hell did you wind up in a heavy band? Yeah. Um, I, well, I listened to a lot of, a lot of music, but recently or the last few years, I've listened to a lot of UK hip hop. Mm-hmm. Um, I have, I have this really irritating thing where, I can't listen to music if I'm like, I could do that. Okay. Oh, like, okay. I, I can't sing like Christina Aguilera. I can't. <laughs> like, I can't do it. And I, I can't rap. You could try. Like, I could try, but I'm not gonna. Um, <laughs> like, and I can't rap. So I listen to stuff that I'm like, well, I can't do that. So I can listen okay. to it. Whereas like, I listen to stuff that's really heavy and I'm like, you played like six chords and you shouted for a bit. I'm not interested anymore. Like, okay. it's not, it, do, it doesn't bite me. Mm. Um, but I, I mean, I've listened to heavy music for years. Uh, I mean, well, I mean, I've, I've, quite, quite obviously, at some point in the alternative culture, um, and I, I've been in heavy bands for years. I mean, I started out being a vocalist in a heavy band because we couldn't find a singer. I was the guitar player, and we couldn't find a singer, so I was like, ah, I'll shout for a bit. That'll do. Um, and that's that's you know, I wound up where we are now. Um, yeah. It was. It was never the plan. <laughs> it was never the plan. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, what is your favorite memory that you made while creating the CP? Favorite. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh man, I don't know. It's got to be one of the videos, actually. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not going to say the video for Slither because that was that was awful, awful to make. <gasps> um, Why? I mean that's a long story. We'll come we'll come back to that in a second. Okay. Um, the video for the Empiric was great fun because it was the first video we'd made in a long time. Like mm-hmm. we'd ha- we'd had lockdown. We hadn't been together. Like I hadn't seen Ben, our drummer, in like a year. Oh. Like genuine, I hadn't seen him in a year. Mm-hmm. And like we all met up. We went to this warehouse that like weirdly used to be this like play place that I would go to when I was a kid. Like it was a ball. Oh, wow. You know, like you go to, you know, when you're a kid, like they got like jungle gyms and like mm-hmm. ball pit and all that sort of stuff. Like they had that and it's not there anymore. Like it's just a warehouse and they had all like the creepy like paintings of like safari animals and shit on the walls. Um, and yeah, we went to this warehouse and we shot this video and like everyone was amped. Like it was, it was, it, there was so much energy. Like it was really cool. Um, I think that was probably my favorite moment in the kind of whole EP cycle so far. Cause we still got more to do. Like, you mm-hmm. know, we haven't finished it yet. Um, the Slither video. <laughs> Um, so the Slither video, uh, it actually comes out in 19 hours time. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at, uh, yeah, again, 2 PM for you guys tomorrow. Um, so it's, I mean, by the time this airs, everyone has seen it. So it's, you know, it's dark, like it's, it's limbo, it's it's blackness, it's water. And there's been some teasers posted on on our Instagram account already. Um, but we did it in, uh, an abandoned building um in the middle of a farm in the middle of nowhere mm-hmm. uh by an old airfield in the middle of the countryside right that's just yeah that's that's horrible already i don't like well, that already horrible but the, what makes it even more horrible is the nearest parking spaces were about a mile and a half away even worse so you got to walk all your gear a mile and a half we built the set from scratch as we always do like we do everything diy like we build everything we, we, we pay someone loki film shout out sean loki um to uh shoot our videos um, but we always build the sets like from scratch. So we had to carry about 300 liters of water by hand. Oh my God. Uh, a mile and a half plus all our gear, plus ourselves, plus all of Sean's gear. Um, and it was a nighttime shoot. So, um, we didn't start shooting until like about 11 o'clock at night 
we didn't finish shooting until about four o'clock in the morning and there were cows like just outside the door um and there was cow shit everywhere of course um and it was cold and i was flapping around in water um and i've been treading in cow shit and then treading in the water and then splashing about in the water and then splashing the water i was covered in it, it was awful and then afterwards i drove uh, so we finished shooting at four i got in my car and i drove to my missus house my girlfriend's house um which is a three and a half hour drive so i didn't get to her house till nearly eight o'clock in the morning and she was like are you okay i was like nah <laughs> I'm dead. Yeah. I'm I smell like cow shit. I, I've been yeah, it's shitting. all over me. Like, yeah. 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 Like, don't I stink. Hug me. I'm wet. Like, yeah. don't touch me. Um, and then she's like, I'm going to get up. I'm like, I'm staying in bed. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was that was awful. But, yeah, best best moment, shooting the Empiric video. That was great fun. Um, there was smoke and shit and, like, like green lights and cables. And it was good. No cow shit. Exactly. No cow shit, yeah. none. There were there was lots of lots of pigeons and pigeon shit though. Mm. She's a bit of a, a bit of a theme with yeah, that I was video. Gonna say. Yeah, I'm right. just wait. I'm waiting for the next one. I'm going to turn up and there's going to be like a corpse in the corner or something. I'll be like, oh, ah. what? or just human yeah. shit. Just yeah, like, I was going to say. Well, yeah, that's that's the next level. Yeah. That's the next level, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, it's not a field. We've got a venue. It's mm. indoor. Okay. It's going to be daytime. I ain't okay. got, I ain't got to be crawling around and anything. It's going to be fine. All right, but okay. like if Turnstile, that hardcore band, plays a show there the night before, there might be shit on the stage or something. Mm-hmm. I, I there don't, could well be. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if you Thank, saw. Thankfully, I don't, I don't think Turnstile can be anywhere near that place. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if you saw on Twitter, but like someone shit in the Turnstile pit. Which is so Like disgusting. a week and a half ago. <laughs> I mean, you guys know the band that did your escape plan? Yes. Yeah. So Dillinger played Reading in 2005, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. same year as Limp Biscuit and Corn, like the new metal thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was the the I didn't I wasn't there, um, but I've seen all the videos on YouTube. Um, and um, Ben Weinman, who is a fucking idol of mine, um, literally bent over halfway through the set and was like, "This is what I think of all the other bands on the bill." And <laughs> shit in a plastic bag, and then threw the plastic bag into the crowd. No. Right? Yeah, genuinely, like this was a thing, um, and then the crowd threw said bag back on stage, Good. and he proceeded to empty that bag out, put his own feces on himself, and then continue to play the set. Um, and he's an idol. <laughs> yeah, but man, yeah, Matt, he's a good guitarist though, <laughs> and he write he writes mad songs. He's a bit twisted, but I just he's got love a bit Dillinger. Yeah, I mean, but well, the next the time, uh, well, the second time I saw Dillinger. Greg, Greg Pachato, the uh, uh, the singer, literally javelin the mic stand into the crowd, like, whoosh, like that. Um, and wow. I like, was throwing shit into the crowd, like, you know, you, you could kill people, like genuinely yeah. kill people. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they were a band of, uh, you know, twisted mentalities. But mm-hmm. yeah, turnstile, you ain't got shit on Dillinger. <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> okay, well, moving on from that. <laughs> um. For this one, I want you to picture you're on tour, you're at a gas station, you're going in. What is your snack of choice? Double decker, easy. You guys don't even have double deckers, do you? Yeah, I don't know. No, what, the fuck what that is, is that? Oh my god! <laughs> right. So, thankfully, down to the 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 the, uh, the brutalistic purchasing of Cadbury chocolate by Kraft. You guys should have Cadbury chocolate in the states by now, right? I think so. Yeah. You th- you think so? Okay. I well, think so. So if you ever see a purple wrapper on a shelf, mm-hmm. right? It's basically mm-hmm. it's it's chocolate as it should be. None of that Hershey shit. None of that mm-hmm. like uh, mm-hmm. no, yeah. It's actually sweet. Like it does actually taste like chocolate. Um, a double decker is Cadbury's chocolate. You've got like a a, a thick layer of n- nougat, nougat, mm-hmm. um, across the top, and then at the bottom it's like just solid chocolate filled with like crunchy biscuit pieces. Mm. Delicious. It tastes sensation. Either that or a Snickers. I'm sure you got a Snickers. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we have yeah. Snickers. It's it's a, it's a Snickers or a double decker. That's my snack of choice. Double um, decker sounds like it smacks. Mm-hmm. It does, man, I, especially if you ever get one, bang it in the microwave for like ten seconds. It goes all like gooey and stuff. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Lovely. Ooh. All right. Well, that sounds good. All right. Uh, so where do you see the band in the next five years? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this isn't how your interviews usually go, is it? <laughs> <laughs> we usually don't have a whole section about, you know, smearing feces. Yeah. Okay, and, you know. Just disclaimer, I've never done that. I never will. Um, okay, good. Good to, yeah, good to know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was, it was a yank that did it and all. It wasn't a, it wasn't a Brit. We was just watching. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, mm, five years time. I mean, 
2022 is looking like it's going to be very exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had a lot of exciting conversations already. Um, so our, our manager is actually um, from the US. Um, he's not been formally announced, but when, just, I mean, I'm sure this is, you're going to cut and edit, but when is this being aired? Uh, two to three weeks from now. If you want us to cut this part out, we can. I'm, I'm imagining it will probably be announced by then, but give me a shout and let me know. Um, so our, our, our manager is um, Ryan Kirby from Fit for a King. God damn. Um, yeah. Whoa, so, whoa, whoa. I'm literally going to see them on Thursday. What the fuck? <laughs> there you go. Um, so he approached us like mm, three, four months ago um, and said he wanted to work with the band. And we were like, yeah, fine. Um, kind of got talking and, and, you know, things have kind of snowballed pretty rapidly from there. Um, we already had things going in the UK, um, and now you know we're in we're in conversation with labels around the world um, for what comes next. Um, and you know while we're not even wrapped on the CP cycle yet, like we have a lot planned for after. Um, I mean we're we're probably about fifty percent of the way done on an album. Um, we've just taken on board a booking agent, uh, Liam from Echelon Talent in the UK, who's you know fantastic agent and, and represents loads of really good bands um i mean five years time oh, i don't want to be that that guy that's like oh we're gonna rule the world but you know I mean, it, sounds we, like we it. don't well well lots of bands have lots of good things happen and then nothing comes of it so i mean i've been here before i'm i'm 30 next year like you know i'm not a spring chicken anymore i've done this i, I was in a band when i was 19 to 21 and did the whole touring thing and had a record deal and, and then kind of went, I'll get a real job now. Um, and, you know, we, we, we kind of did, we, we never planned anything for this. Like we just started making songs as a bunch of friends and it just kind of went. Poof. And so we just carried on pursuing it. And it's, it's been a bit of a pipe dream. Like, you know, we were about to tap a million views on our first single. Like that's, that's crazy. Like yeah. off, off like no PR nothing. So five years, no idea um i'm hoping like two three albums in i hope to at least two albums in um i'm hoping we've been to the states by then mm-hmm. um i am i haven't been back to this i am into the states since i was like near to a barn door like i was like six oh. um so i want to do that i want to go to japan i really want to mm. go to japan um well i want to tour with some cool bands and yeah just make it a thing like do that thing that you thought like people who people are like musicians when you're like 15 you're like I'm going to be in a rock band one day. <laughs> yeah. And, and then like everyone's like, ah, you're going to work at McDonald's. And then one day you're like, ah, fuck you. I did mm. it. Um, and that's kind of the plan, you know, is one day do a thing. You know? So yeah, five years time, I'll be in like, where are you guys from? Where, whereabouts in the States are you from? I'm in New Jersey. I'm in Virginia. It's the East Coast. Whoa, that's, that's a long distance away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How do you guys know each other? The internet. Uh, yeah, the internet, Discord. Cute. Um, yeah, well, we'll be, we'll be in Jersey and we'll be in Virginia. Perfect. Okay, we good. Cute, we say cute in the UK when it's like, oh, that's nice. Not like, yeah. uh, ooh, cute. <laughs> None of that. Don't worry. <laughs> You've okay. caught me. You, you, you wanted to start your interview at midnight. You wanted to start it at midnight UK time. Mm-hmm. You get midnight version of me. You're I love it. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so for the last couple of questions, we're actually going to shift away from music, if that's okay with you. That's absolutely fine. Great. So we're going to go straight to death row. Boom. So if you're Jesus on death Christ. row, what would your last meal be with a drink? Christ, that's dark. Yeah. Um, well, I'm dr- right now I'm drinking Henry Weston's vintage, just cider in the States. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you have actual cider in the States or is it like apple wine? I don't know. I think we have cider. I don't, okay. I don't know. You, you guys even allowed to drink? How old are you? 18. 16. Yeah. The Yay! drinking age is 21 <laughs> oh, okay. here. So. Yeah. Fuck, man. You got rumbled. All yeah. right. Um, well, this is, so I, re- I recently did a craft beer podcast, right? Mm-hmm. And I got invited to talk about music and drink beer at the same time. So I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm tasting from that. This is a Henry Weston's vintage 8.2% cider, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. It's lovely. comes from very local to me, a place called Herefordshire, just uh, uh, in, the, in the west of England. Um, very, very strong, very dry, lovely, as cider should be. I'll have one of them, right, as my last drink. Okay. Um, I mean, it's probably got to be a steak, I'll be mm-hmm. fair. 
Um, but like a, a big ass steak, not none of yeah. this like eight, none of this eight ounce nonsense. Like, give me a sixteen ounce thick cut doorstop like sirloin. Yeah. Or or a T bone with the with the with the bone in it, like a tomahawk. I'm about that. Uh-huh. Uh, thick cut chips, fried. <laughs> I gotta say, we say chips, and you guys go, "What in a bag?" I'm like, "No, man." <laughs> no, no, no. I right. know what you mean. Yeah. Them, them exactly. I understood you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, yeah. Chips, fries, big dick bastards. Um, peas, grilled mushroom, onion rings, uh, and I'd probably want. I mean, this is controversial, but I'd want some scampi with it as well. Okay. And a, pep- oh, okay. And a peppercorn sauce, and I'd have it all smothered. Um, that'll probably do me. All right. And then, yeah, stick the cap on me. Ed. Done. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Great. Perfect. Your, your meal was easier to understand from an American perspective than most UK people we interview. Most of the time, they give us some whack ass UK meal, and we just sit here and go, uh huh. We know oh, what that means. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. okay, I'm, I'm intrigued. Okay, well, so what's what's the what's the what's the weirdest UK meal you've been given? Oh, good God, I don't like, even probably, know. Like probably, I think somebody mentioned like pudding once, and I was like, pudding. Yeah, pudding. We don't we don't call it pudding. What do you call it? Pie. Pie? No one calls it pudding. <laughs> no, but it's like the. What are you even talking to? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Cri- Christmas. There's a pudding at Christmas. Your Christmas you have pudding. Mm-hmm. And it's it's sponge with with like currants in it and stuff and it's bright spot with brandy. So it's like shit. And your nan eats it and it's rubbish. No wait, so it's a cake. It. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. That's yeah. very interesting. We're learning so much but, tonight. But, but pudding is just mm-hmm. pie, like filling inside pastry with a lid. Okay. 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 But or More black you know. pudding. You ever had black pudding? No. What is it? That's just pig's blood. Oh. Huh. That's not appealing. <laughs> um, I mean, it is. If you, you eat it, it's nice. It's you had of, it. It's got. Oh yeah. It's got bits of oatmeal and like like oh. fat in it, and you grill it, and it's it's delicious. Oatmeal in pig's blood. Blood sausage, yeah. So now it's a sausage. Well, it looks like a sausage. It's like I mean, I mean, we're getting into dangerous territory here, but it looks like a big big. Penis. Phallus. Yes. <laughs> well, we don't have anybody to answer to. Hence, I could say penis at the phrase, show. Blood sausage. Blood, okay. Yeah, I know, but okay. Yeah, okay. But okay, so so was, was that nothing else. No one else said nothing. Nothing. No other weird. We don't have weird food in this country, man. All Whoa. our food's rubbed. All our food's rubbed. Fish and chips is Portuguese. Curry's Indian, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? Jerk chicken's Caribbean. We don't fucking own that. Uh, pie is probably the only thing we got. Yeah. Beef, beef bourguignon, which is basically national dishes, French. Mm-hmm. Bunch of criminals over there. <laughs> I know, man. Well, all we did was fucking like travel, rape, pillage, and plunder, and then yeah, that's oh. all you did. <laughs> Empire. I'm not, I'm not saying it was right. I'm not saying it was of right. Of course, yeah. Just saying that's none what happened. None of it was. None of it was right, but it did happen. Yeah. And yeah. That's why we are a melting pot of cultures. And that's why when you get all these these fucking flag waving twats in our country going, and get them all out. I'm like, well, to be honest, mate, you wouldn't have a country if it weren't for everyone else. So yeah, shut up. Anyway, we're drifting far from the topic here. Right, next one. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you could live in one fiction world for a week, where would you live? Oh, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Fictional world. I'll go Westeros. Westeros. Oh, that's on um, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll probably go the north though. I like it when it's cold. It's okay. about. I mean. I mean. It's twenty-eight degrees here right now. Oh. Yeah. Um. Celsius, not Fahrenheit. What's mm-hmm. that in Fahrenheit? I don't know. I think it's. I think it's in the seventies. I could be wrong. It's twenty-eight hot, degrees yeah. Celsius in Fahrenheit. <laughs> Thank this interview is worth the shit anyway. 82.4 degrees 82. Fahrenheit. Okay, I was somewhat hot. close. Yeah. Right? For midnight, hot. Uh-huh. That's very right? hot, yeah. Really hot. Thanks, global warming. Um, so I'll go the north. I'll go I'll go Winterfell. I'll go the... Uh, fuck it, I'll go the wall. Right. Yeah. Be all up there. There you go. Good crack. Perfect. <laughs> uh, so I have the honor of asking the last question. Every single person we've spoken to has actually said it is the most important question. Okay. What is your favorite color? Green. Specific shade of green. The nastiest, slimiest, dirtiest, most neon bastard shade of green. Um, if you look at the empiric artwork, mm-hmm. that green, oh, okay. like sludgy, like offensive, that looks unpleasant green. Basically, <laughs> I'm colorblind and I can't, 
I'm always told that the colours I like are not actually that pleasing to the eye. Oh. Um, and I really like that green. I'm like that green. I'll drive a car in that green. <laughs> in fact, I saw a I saw a BMW M3 in that green, and that was my dream car for a few years. Wow. Oh. I hope you get that. Oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that was the most important question. I say the food was the most important question. I like food, so that's why. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Me too. Uh, so as Gloria said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you'd like to plug? Um, usual stuff. So uh, we are we're everywhere. Like every band ever, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can find us on SoundCloud, although there's actually nothing on SoundCloud because we earn no royalties from stuff being on there. Oh. So, you know, um, but we are on there. We're on mm-hmm. Bandcamp. Uh, we're on YouTube. Um, we don't have a Vimeo because there's no need. Um, mm. We have a website, www.memorist.co.uk. Um, you can find us on the Dreambound channel on YouTube. Um, but essentially, we are everywhere. You know, Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, Pandora, Tidal, uh, Amazon Music, Google Music, whatever. Like, we're everywhere. Um, so tap Memorist in. Um, there are no other bands called Memorist. There is a Korean drama by the same name. Oh. Thankfully, it ended after one season. Oh. Done. Um, I'm not upset by that. I'm quite happy. <laughs> oh, we, yeah, launched, I mean, woo. we launched and a week later, they popped up. I was like, lads, <laughs> what are you doing? You're stealing the name and that? Nah. Um, but give us, a, give us a search. Have a little look. Um, watch the videos that are on the Dreambound channel, um, listen to music on, on our streaming services and drop us a message. Like We like to hear from people. We like to talk to people. It's either myself or Chris who generally monitors the Instagram or the Facebook uh, or Craig, maybe at a push. Um, and like, if you message, you're not going to talk to a, a manager or someone else. You'll actually talk to one of us and you know we will genuinely want to talk to you. Like that's we are social people. Despite my current appearance and how I may have responded to some of your questions, um, we are generally like nice and, 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 and want to engage with our fans. And um, you know, the people that, that listen to our music are the reason we make the music and the people who buy it and buy our merchandise and the, the reason we're able to continue making music. So yeah, reach out and let's have a chat. Oh yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you for now. This has been John from Memorist and we've been the Good Noise Podcast.